Now, as a small nation, we really punch well above our weight when it comes to medical breakthroughs. And our next guest is an old mate of mine and a leader in his field. Professor Tom Barodi is a gastroenterologist and the director of the Centre for Digestive Diseases at Five Dock in Sydney. And Tom and his team have made a breakthrough in the treatment of Crohn's disease, which is a debilitating gut condition, which affects about 100,000 Australians. And he's on the line. Good evening, Tom. Good evening. Thank you. It's so lovely to, talk, lovely to talk to you, mate. Now, can you explain to the listeners, what is Crohn's disease? Well, it's a chronic inflammation inside our small and or large bowel where there is increased pain, diarrhea, weight loss, holes can come up called fistulae, abscesses, and it's just never ending. It goes on all your life. Okay. You don't get a spontaneous disappearance. So how it is sounds, it? Sounds debilitating. It, it's a horrible. It's, yeah. Crohn's disease is a horrible condition. How, how is it conventionally treated, Tom? It's treated, um, treating the symptoms with anti-inflammatory drugs, like you would treat an ulcer with a tagamet or something. Right. And that's been going on for years and years because there was no good cause for it found. And so these things do give you a bit of a change, improvement, but they don't cure you. Yeah, and, and so people are given these treatments, but the condition is never cured. Correct. Okay, so what made your group decide to take this new approach? And can you explain to us exactly what you've done and exactly what's happened from doing this. Right, so it's individualized treatment that is based on the idea that there is a Crohn's disease in animals called Yoni's disease, and that was postulated back in 1913. And then Crohn described the condition in 1932, but he couldn't find a bug. And the problem is that the bug cannot be cultured, whereas we can for Helicobacter. Mm. And so from then on, it was all inflammation treatment. But there has been a lot of evidence that the bug is there, but it's hard to treat. So we followed let's treat the bug policy. And what's the bug? The bug is called Mycobacterium avium, subspecies paratuberculosis. Long name, one of 200 or so um, tuberculous-like bugs, atypicals. Mm -hmm. And they are classically difficult to treat. Right. And I came from the background of treating tuberculosis when I worked for a year in the Solomon Islands and also treating leprosy, which is difficult to treat. And so I fell into Crohn's and there it is. We treated a few people and they got much better just with antibiotics. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you've done more than just with antibiotics. And that was also by chance. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have Clostridium difficile overgrows your bowel. And the only way really to cure that is to do an enema of someone else's healthy bacteria, the microbiome, and the bugs kill this bug. Okay. And we had a few Crohn's patients who had Clostridium difficile. They were on antibiotics. Then they got given the fecal microbiota transplantation mm. and blow me down. They got better and remained better. Seven years passed, eight, eight years, and there's nothing in the bowel anymore. And they go off the therapy and they stay good. So we have patients for between three and now 24 years off all therapy, no more Crohn's. And that was by chance. Yeah, but, but let's go back for a second. You're the world pioneer of fecal transplants. Now, the, the question I put to you, my friend, is how on earth did you come up with this idea? I read a paper from 1957. I had a very sick patient. She was so ill after going to Fiji, she was going to commit suicide. She just was so ill. Mm. And I read a paper from 1957 when antibiotics just came in, but Clostridium difficile hadn't been yet described. And so I read it showed it to her and her brother was the donor and she got well and she had colitis of thoughts mm. and only retrospectively that i realized what we had done we cured the first colitis in the world back in 1988 that next year we did 59 fecal transplants and total now close to 36 37,000. right and but how do they actually work i mean to just explain to the listeners how you do a fecal transplant and how they actually work well, when we have our normal bacteria in our, in our bowel, which number about eight to nine times more living cells in the body, so we're 10% human, 80 to 90% poo in a way. Mm. And these bacteria... Speak for yourself, Tom. Factories. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my friends are 99% poo. So <laughs> these bacteria, imagine them being factories that make antibiotics. Yeah. In fact, you know, where was... Uh, Streptomycin found in a bug called Actinomyces back in May Clinic in 1943. Penicillin came from a fungus. Most of the bacteria produce substances, safe or unsafe, but they can kill other bacteria. So when you run in a healthy person's bowel poo into someone who's got an infection, even though you may not be able to detect it, 
that stool bacterium will kill other bacteria. And this is what happens in this situation. Bugs kill bugs. Okay, so you've, you've published this paper on Crohn's disease. Correct. Do you think it's going to be taken up by the rest of the world? Oh, ultimately, it will be. When we did, discovered triple therapy for Helicobacter, it took 26 years. But then they came out with awards and things, and ulcers have disappeared. And I hope that perhaps in my lifetime, Crohn's disease will be reduced to a very small trickle of cases. But it's an infection. We should be able to improve upon the treatment and get a cure every year better than and better. A big trial already showed the same thing that was done across the world, but that was only comparing placebo with active. They had not had a cure. But in this situation, I think we are curing Crohn's. If it doesn't come back but for 20 years, you can't call it a remission. And the uh, Professor, that, that would be, uh, sorry, Ross, but that, right. that would be incredible, uh, a change of life for people if that, if that were the case. It that, is. That, 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 um, that is going to affect thousands and thousands of people. That's right. I was speaking to a, a guy whom I met in the escalator going to Coles. I looked at him. I hadn't seen him for some years. And then we talked. He had been having blood transfusion after blood transfusion, iron infusions, bowel problems, and he's one of the cured ones. Um, and then we treated him with antibiotics and then did the fecal transplant, and then he remained well. He's seven to eight years later now. No need for treatment. So I'm amazed myself, just like you guys are, because it, to me it's not believable either. All I've been doing is treating patients as if they're going to have the disease for the rest of their life. But Tom, you, you've not just restricted this to the treatment of Crohn's, you've also used similar treatments for other conditions, ulcerative colitis and a few other, but even irritable bowel, haven't you, have you not? That's correct. Ulcerative colitis is much easier to cure. We've got 60 or 70 or such. Uh, the total number of Crohn's is around 22 now because when we put this paper in, it was knocked from journal to journal until it was accepted. Irritable bowel syndrome, yes, uh, we're developing better and better fecal transplantation because the problem is, will it stick, will it stay? But yes, ultimately, I think all these conditions that are driven by an infected microbiome, that means your poo's carrying an invisible or occult infection, will fall to the treatment with a new implantation. Lots of diseases. Well, that's, look, that's extraordinary stuff, Tom, and uh, obviously we'll keep in touch. And thank you so much for being on the show tonight. My pleasure. Well, that's thank Professor you. Tom Brady, who's the, uh, the professor and director of the Centre of Digestive Diseases in Sydney's Five Doc. Extraordinary what? stuff.